Hey, hey, Turnbuckle King here. Got another good one for you guys today. We'll talk about who was pro wrestling top heels for the future. Pro wrestling's next top heels documentary. Now, this documentary will talk about the next big thing as far as heels go. Who are the three guys I think will be the next heels in the industry? Not just WWE. And when did they turn heel? And what's their rightful claim moment? What is their best moment or best match that put them in that great caliber of heel status? What put them there? What's their best moment? Now, I will go down each guy, each wrestler, and I will explain the whole basis of them being heel. And do I believe and why they should be one of the best top heels in the company and also in the industry. With that being said, let's get into it. We'll start off with Dominic Mysterio. Now, for all you guys know that Dominic Mysterio, he is one of the company's most hated heels. Now, Dominic Mysterio, who was a babyface for a while, he turned heel at the Clash of the Castle 2022. When he tagged with his dad, Ray Mysterio, and Edge. Now, after they won a match, he low blow Edge and his dad, and he officially turned heel at the Clash of the Castle. Even though they won, he storyline was tired of being the shadow of his dad, tired of being told what to do, pretty much wanted to break out on his own. And that's when he started calling Ray Mysterio a dead bee and all that stuff. Not only did he turn heel, he joined the faction that Ray himself and Edge was feuding against. That's the Judgment Day. As we can see here, this is when he aligned himself with Judgment Day. Even though they had previously attacked him, and you saw a little tease of Maria giving him a manipulation look. But other than that, um, he did turn heel. Definitely to the crowd dismay and how he disrespected his dad, Ray Mysterio, on screen over and over again. Not only did he turn here with Judgment Day, he knocked out the park. Yeah, segments here where he officially was dressing like Judgment Day. Not only just looking, but definitely playing the part. Just wearing the t shirts and everything. So it's just um, crazy how this come about. Now, question is, what is the biggest moment and match as the heel for Dominic Mysterio? I believe it's when he won the NXT North American Championship for the first time. This is back during the summertime on the episode of regular NXT. He defeated the previous champion, Wes Lee. Now, of course, he is a heel. He had help from Rhea Ripley, you know, hitting... Wesley with the belt, you know, due to the distraction of the referee who did not see what happened. He was distracted, and Ray, Myst I'm sorry, Dom Mysterio went up for the win. One, two, three, NXT American, North American champion, and he is currently on his second run as NXT North American champion. But just aside from that, this is, he tries to talk. And the crowd just boos him over and over again. It's no other feeling to that. He gets more pure heel heat than pretty much anybody else in the whole WWE. And that says a lot concerning WWE. He has a lot of heels. We're talking the rest of the Judgment Day. Roman Reigns in the bloodline. You know, a um, whole bunch of other guys. And it's just amazing that. As young as Dom is, I believe he's 26, he's generating this much heat for the crowd. And this happens every time he gets on the mic. 
And that's what I believe is going to make him a definitely top heel in the future. As he gets older, he's going to get better in the ring, but not just in the ring, but his character will get better as he develops more and more. I know there was controversy of him. He should have did NXT first before joining the main roster, but him being the hottest faction on Monday Night Raw and getting the heat he does, WWE just couldn't resist, but not to just keep him on Raw, but they did put him in NXT as well. He's just bouncing back between both brands until he loses the NXT North American Championship for a second time. I believe after that, he'll pretty much stay on Raw. He won't be on both shows like that anymore. But I believe Dominic Mysterio has all the attributes and all everything behind him to become one of the best top heels for the future. Next up, we have Braun Breaker. <laughs> for those who don't know, Braun Breaker, he is a part of the NXT developmental brand. He is a former two-time NXT champion and the son of Rick Steiner and a Hall of Famer. Now, Ron Breaker, he went heel officially, officially went heel on the April 4th episode of NXT. And this was after his match with Carmelo Hayes at NXT Stand and Deliver, where he will lose the NXT championship to Melo in a great match those two had. He even raised up Carmelo Hayes' hand during that after that match was over. Now, Carmelo, who was a heel, was transitioning to a babyface, but Braun would be the one to transition to the heel. Braun Breaker and Carmelo Hayes pretty much they switched roles. So Braun wasn't the babyface anymore. He wasn't even wearing the colorful, you know, clothes he had, you know, the blue. It reminisced the colors of NXT 2.0, the yellow, blue, and white. When he turned heel by attacking Carmelo Hayes after their match on the April 4th episode, he also attacked Trick Williams as he got tired of losing and he wanted to change. So he went dark. He started wearing the colorful stuff. He started wearing all black. And for people who know in the wrestling industry, when a character that was good it starts wearing dark colors it show it signifies a heel persona they start to wear black which is reminiscent of a dark character so Braun start wearing that so and also he even cut one promo that he is sick of the fans he called them scumbags he said in one promo that Having an NXT championship was a curse. It wasn't even a blessing to him. It was a curse. He was tired of fans. He was going to do what he wanted to do. Now, the question is, for Braun Breaker, what is the biggest moment slash match as a heel? Well, his one, I don't believe, was a match. It was a moment to say. His moment was on the current episode of NXT October 10th, 2023. This is when the episode it went head to head against AEW Dynamite Title Tuesday. This is when he faced Carmelo Hayes. He had Paul Heyman in his corner for Braun Breaker, and Carmelo Hayes had John Cena in his corner. Now, Braun Breaker would go on to lose the match, but he had a face off against The Undertaker. He was talking a lot of smack, a lot of crap to Undertaker. Only to get choke slammed by the dead man himself. This was big because not only this was John Cena and Paul Heyman being on NXT and Oscar, but it was the first time Undertaker has ever been on NXT ever. And he interacted with Braun Breaker of anybody. And Undertaker even said in himself in interviews that Braun Breaker has a bright future ahead of him. In so many words. So I believe as a heel for Braun Breaker, this was his moment. He got chokeslammed by Undertaker on a special episode of NXT. And nobody on NXT roster could say that but him. Now, of course, he raised Carmelo Hayes afterwards, but Braun Race wanted to get chokeslammed. And they want so much to bury Braun Breaker and made him look good showing and getting approval from, from The Undertaker, who of course, agreed to do this. It's saying that Braun Breaker has what it takes to be not just a top heel, but a star in the business itself. 
Now, last but not least, we have after that Sola Sokoa. Solo, who made his debut at Clash of the Castle. He debuted as attacking Drew McIntyre in the championship match against Roman Reigns. And he helped Roman Reigns retain his undisputed WWE championship. So, since he did that, no one saw this coming. Nobody. We were so used to the Usos, you know, interfering. But he came at Clash of the Castle as he was a good guy, mostly on NXT 2.0 at the time. And he took the hoodie off and he revealed himself. And they said, oh, that's Sos Koa. Because they were saying it was Buzz. Who would be the new next Bloodline member? Who's next to join? Someone in Roman Reigns' family was going to join the Bloodline. We didn't know who it was. But there were rumors of Solo. And this is when he debuted. And that is when he was officially a heel. So I believe Solo doing that has got him a lot of heat from the crowd. The Bloodline is one of the most hated stables, along with the Judgment Day. Roman Reigns is the leader. So that definitely gained him some boos from the crowd. But Solo doesn't care. He's doing a good job. Now the question is, was Solo was the biggest moment match as a heel for Solo Sokoa? And that would be the recent match he just had on the recent WWE PLE and that's against John Cena at the Crowd Jewel PLE November 4th which was a little over a week ago and you know John Cena did a real good build up saying he hasn't won a match since the World Rumble I mean I'm sorry the greatest Royal Rumble in 2018 when he defeated Triple H spent 2,000 matches and he has not had a single win and he thought he would gain a win against Solo. They teased the retirement of John Cena. But Solo Sokoa, he came out to play. He did his thing. And he uh, got Cena here on the Samoa Spike. The same move that his uncle did, Umaga. Pretty much John Cena has a beef with the bloodline. Everybody in the bloodline, that whole family, he had a beef with from Umaga to The Rock to Roman Reigns. Usos now Solo. And he defeated John Cena. One, two, three. He's the victor. This made him look extremely good. Cena looked good too, even in a loss. Because he beat not just anybody. He defeated John Cena, which WWE calls the GOAT, the greatest of all time. For him to defeat him on a major stage, it's major. Now, I know people are going to say that Austin Theory did it at WrestleMania 39 for the WWE United States Championship, but it wasn't the same feeling as this. This was a real feud. I believe John Cena was thrown to that feud with Austin Theory as he wasn't around as much because that was that's when the strike was not going on at that time. As the strike is off now and, he, and John Cena is going back to work, this was all during the strike with Solo, perfect timing. He had time to be around on multiple SmackDowns and build up a proper storyline for him against Solo at the Crowd Jewel event. So I believe that since he had the time to build up the story, it made Solo look real good. It made Cena look real good. And it was a more believable, more believable feud compared to the one he had with Austin Theory at WrestleMania. But I believe that Solo, he showed up. And he put on a great performance, as well as John Cena. Now, the question is, after all three guys I mentioned, are these wrestlers top heels for the future? Now, I stated my case for Dominic Mysterio, Braun Breaker, and also Solo. And I believe these three have what it takes to be the next top heels of the company. Now, Solo is 30. Braun Breaker, he is, I believe, 20, 25. No, he's 26. Dominic Mysterio is also 26. So these guys are the future. 
Now, it didn't include some people maybe of uh, uh, Gunther. Gunther's a little up at age. And also, he's been on the main roster for a while. Solo's only been on the main roster for a year. Ron Brink was still on NXT. And Don Mysterio is bounced between both Raw NXT and he has a lot more future. A lot of these, all three of these guys have a lot, a lot more in their career left as long as they stay healthy and stay out of trouble. I believe these three guys, if not all three, at least one of them will be a part of the top heels in the wrestling industry. And that is my claim for that. You guys could tell me otherwise if you have any other opinion. And that's all I have of which of who is pro wrestler top heels for the future. Pro wrestlers next top heels documentary. Now you guys let me know in the comment section what do you think. Uh, there's some names that you believe that should be added to this list. Is the list perfect or should none of them be a part of it? Soon two bills will pop up. Two major game changers on SmackDown. The next video will be why Vince McMahon being forced out again out of WWE. Until then, it is O-U-T.